Hi, you're watching BK Hobby, and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your OpenHab to the latest version. Before we start, I want to say that I will have a lot more videos coming up on OpenHab, so if you're interested in the topic, please go ahead and subscribe, and I will link to some of my other videos so you can catch up on some of the things I've built for my home automation system. So the first step I take before any upgrade, and what I definitely recommend doing, is backing up your OpenHab configuration. In my case, OpenHab runs on a Raspberry Pi, and I have a share set up so I can access it remotely. And on this share, this configuration folder is where I store all my scripts, items, sitemaps, and rules. So I'm going to double click inside here, select all the files, and compress them into a zip file. Now I can copy this file off, and in case anything happens to my configuration through the upgrade, I'll be able to restore it just by exp expanding it back into this folder. The other thing I recommend doing is checking your add-ons configuration file, which is stored under the services folder. So a lot of people have problems upgrading their installation of OpenHab if they have things uncommented within in this file, especially these binding definitions. I'm a big fan of having my configuration files hard-coded so I can easily restore my configuration. So you will notice that my binding configuration line is uncommented and I'm listing every binding that needs to be installed into my OpenHab. If you use Paper UI to install your bindings, you want to make sure that these lines are commented out by putting a pound sign in front of it because otherwise if this line does not match what's in your Paper UI, your bindings will be uninstalled at startup and you will run into problems with your items not working. Okay, so now that I have everything backed up, I'm going to log into my OpenHab Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, I'm using OpenHabian. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the OpenHabian configuration utility by typing sudo openhabian-config and pressing enter. I'll have to type in my super user password. And OpenHabian has notified me that there's an update available. I'm going to skip this just in case you don't see this message and show you how to do this manually. So most of the time you will see this main menu in OpenHabian. The first step you want to do when upgrading is update OpenHabian config itself. So I'll select update and hit enter. Next, I want to upgrade the system, which will upgrade all of the, the Raspbian operating system components within my Raspberry Pi. Okay, so as OpenHab is installing, I'm going to show you what's going on with my tail logger. I'm going to start seeing a lot of errors in here, and it's going to tell me that OpenHab stopped operating. And as it installs, you might get some of these prompts here as the new version of OpenHab is trying to replace files that you modified in the existing version. So this one's pretty big. This is the add-ons config file I showed you earlier. So because I've modified this file, I want to make sure that my modifications make it through to the new version. So I'm going to hit D first and show the differences between the versions. And for the most part, the differences I'm going to see is minor comment changes like this one, commented out lines like here, the ability to access remote add-on repositories, which is something I enabled, and the use of legacy bindings, which is something I also enabled. And of course, in the regular OpenHab package file, the binding, UI, persistence, action, transformation, voice, and miscellaneous add-ons are going to be commented out. In my case, since I'm hardcoding these add-ons to be installed, I'm going to make sure that I keep these. So because the changes are so minor, mostly comments. I'm going to keep my version and not worry about it. Hit Q to get out of the compare. And in this case, I'm going to hit N to keep my currently installed version of the file. If you find there's bigger changes, you probably want to install the package maintainer's version. And for that, you will hit Y. At the end of the installation, you will need to go back into the file and transfer over any changes you've made to your configuration. I have another modified file here the runtime config. So I'm going to hit D again. And in this case, I modified the file to set mapdb as the default persistence service. So again, I'm going to keep my version of this file. Hit Q and then hit N to keep my currently installed version. Okay, so now that the system upgrade completed, I'm going to go ahead and check my logger again. Okay, so after I let OpenHab start up after the installation, I'm seeing all my temperature readings from my sensors. Looks like my mono price amp items are also refreshing. 
So I shouldn't be able to go to my home site map and refresh it. And there it is. Look at some temperature charts. And I'm going to also check my hat panel to make sure it is working. Controlling my basement audio zone and it's turning on as I'm clicking the button. So everything seems to have worked correctly. So that was a pretty simple update. But sometimes things don't work out so well. So I'm going to show you two things that I've done in the past to fix a failed installation. I do these things if my UIs stop working or if I see a lot of errors in my logs. The first thing to do is to go into Open Habian, apply improvements, and fix permissions. This will run through and fix any missing or incorrect file permissions on your Open Hab configuration or system files. So once you run through that option, everything will be back to normal. While here, you can also run the packages and bash and vim settings in case you haven't updated Open Habian in a while and there's some improvements that were not installed. And if that doesn't work, the next step to try is clearing the cache. Rich Koshak on the OpenHab forums created this dedicated post for clearing the cache. So you can follow his guide step by step to clear your cache. This will delete any temporary files or corrupted components and let OpenHab start with a fresh instance. So the two folders you're gonna need to look at are your cache and TMP folders in the var lib openhab2 directory. Since I have my Samba share set up, I can go to my openhab share, click on user data, and these are the two folders I'm gonna be looking at, cache and TMP. I don't wanna delete the folders themselves. I just wanna go inside, select the files and delete them. And that will clear the cache. Again, I'm not gonna do this because the installation went fine, but just in case yours doesn't and you absolutely have no idea what's wrong, this might be a good step to take. And just in case this still didn't work and you're thinking of blowing away your system and restoring it from scratch, just check out the OpenHab forums and post a new topic. You'll definitely get help with your specific problem here. As a final tidbit of information from personal experience, if you haven't already done so and you're using Raspberry Pi, they absolutely eat through SD cards. I've had two of them fail on me already. Fortunately, I had backup images, so I was able to restore quickly. But ever since then, I've learned that the best way to run OpenHab on a Raspberry Pi is to boot it from an SD card, but run the actual system off of a USB drive. All you need is a USB flash drive, like this one. This is the one I use. It's a 32 gig. It's very small, so it's perfect for a Raspberry Pi, and it's less than 10 bucks right now. So once you have the USB stick and you have your OpenHab set up, you can go back to OpenHab and config, select system setting and select the move root to USB option. This will move all of the system files from your SD card to the USB drive. And from now on, your, your OpenHab logs will be written to that USB drive, saving the SD card write cycle. It's completely transparent to the user and it saves you a lot of trouble in the long run. So those are just a few of my tips and tricks on running, configuring and upgrading OpenHab. I'll post links to the OpenHab Community Forum articles and the USB drive I use in the video description below. I'll also be making more OpenHab videos in the future, so please like and subscribe to the channel. This is BK Hobby, and thank you for watching.